Okay, keep your eyes closed. Okay. I want to show you my first ever painting. Mm, all right. Okay. Open your eyes. Oh, that's a lot of colors mm -hmm. <laughs> and shapes. So be honest. What do you think? Well, uh, I like how if you switch to Geico, you could save hundreds of dollars on car insurance. Oh yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. Here, why don't I hold your paintbrush while you call them? Geico, because saving fifteen percent or more on car insurance is always a great answer. Hi, welcome to the Living in Partnership with Spirit show. I'm Ingrid Turner, your host. Thrilled as ever to be here today. So during these shows, I will be discussing the spiritual energies forecast for the week. I will be uh, dissecting, elaborating, and communicating divine messages that I receive from Spirit to you in the best way I know how. I have special shows once a month featuring panels with expert guests on in-depth topics, and this month's show is next week on the 16th, Tuesday, 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to dive into sacred sexuality, What about how we merge and meld our spirituality with our sexuality and some of the potential issues that can pop up there. So don't miss that. That's a great, that's a great show. I've got three amazing women coming on to talk to us about that. So before I go into the meat of the show today, I always want to make it really clear to you if you're new listening today that I, I want to assure you that there's no special reason that I receive the messages that I do from spirit, except that I'm open to it and I'm fiercely committed to it, fiercely committed to this lifestyle. So that doesn't make me any better or worse than anyone else. It just means I'm open to it. Um, and I am just so profoundly grateful to be here with you today and find myself in a position where I'm able to receive with such clarity and then share my experience of these messages with you. So thank you, thank you for being present with me, for allowing me to share Spirit's wisdom and advice with you. So your job is really simple. Listen to what comes through and take what you hear. Hold on to what resonates deeply with you and then let the rest go. I don't prescribe a dogma. I just share what I get and I share it in the clearest way that I know how. So if you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, I work with people doing readings. I go, I work long-term with people on sort of long-term life stuff. Uh, you can book time with me on my website at ingridhturner.com. That's I-N-G-R-I-D-H-T-U-R-N-E-R.com. And I offer a whole bunch of different ways to connect directly to spirit for you, to be your medium. So um, you can purchase an email reading from me for as low as $25, or you can book time with me up to an hour long. So once again, that's IngridHTurner.com. That's I-N-G-R-I-D-H-T-U-R-N-E-R.com. Another great way to connect with me and many other like-minded people is through our Facebook group. It's called Living in Partnership with Spirit, so it's the same name as this show. You just plug that into your Facebook search bar, and that'll come right up. So let me start the show, as I always do, with a definition of living in partnership with spirit. I mean, what does that even mean? And really, living in partnership with spirit, I think that definition is personal for everybody. That means something special to everyone. So I'll share that for me. It means to commune with the divine and live from a place of feeling and intuition. So for me, living with a lot less anxiety and a lot more certainty in my life and ultimately living my highest purpose in this body on this planet. So this show takes the opportunity to explore different themes and topics and paths to living in partnership with spirit and dive into ways, as many of the ways as possible, that we communicate, experience, and work with spirit in our daily lives. Okay, so that being said, let me dive into the spiritual energies for the week. So the um, I'm going Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so taking the whole week. So we're going back a little bit, just going back a day. Yesterday it was a really nice day energetically. I had it was um, it it was about happily ever after, happy families, you know, being fulfilled on all levels, you know, really lining up those energies, the, the emotional, the intellectual, the spiritual, and feeling really good. It was a, it was a time to really feel good and kind of ride that high wave. And then moving on to in the rest of this week during the weekdays, the reason we have those highs is so that we can manage the quote lows unquote and i don't mean lows i mean it's an opportunity for us to really dig some stuff up and really make make massive improvements in our psyche in our energy in our expansion and this week is really special because over the next few days we're going to be asked to evaluate and walk away from things that we've been holding on to very tightly and by things i mean generally relationships are a big one that we're being asked to reevaluate and decide if that is what 
you know, if, if that relationship is what we want to continue to hang on to. You know, people are a mirror for us, and because we, you know, we share energy with people. And so if you're sharing energy with people who are no longer a match for you energetically, then it's going to be more, it's going to be challenging for you to, comp- to fully expand into your power, which I'll get to in a minute. That's, that's sort of a, that's a big piece of it, too, coming up into the weekend. So you're going to be asked to walk away, to have the courage to walk away that which is no longer serving you, whether that's people, circumstances, a job. And this is going to be something, these are going to be things that you have, you have invested time and energy into, you can love into. But there comes a time when you detach yourself from that. And maybe it doesn't look like physically walking away. Maybe it looks like energetically walking away. Maybe it looks like giving up you know, giving up on a lost cause or giving up on something that you just been banging your head against the wall for because there's a new and better direction for you to be moving in. Okay. Now following that 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 sort of emotional piece of walking away, there's this will be an opportunity for you to clear some space, really reevaluate how you view the world. How what your thinking is. Really start to work on your thinking. Because remember our thoughts create our reality. Our thoughts create our reality. They create our feelings, are the uh, energies that, that make things manifest, that bring our desires into the physical world. So you're going to need, you're going to want to reevaluate your thinking. How do I think about this? How do I want to think about this? How do I want to think about life? How do I want to think about the world? And this, these energies, you know, they are, um, there's, there's a tendency to feel very wheel spinny when we're, when we're in the midst of this kind of thing, when we're in the midst of this kind of transition. Not so much transformation, but transition feels like a really good word for that. So, but even though if you feel like you're not getting ahead, if you feel like you're not making progress, I want you to be assured that you are making more progress than it feels like you are. And that, so that's how I was going to feel this week. It's like, oh my God, <laughs> am I just backtracking here? Am I even make? am I, am I expanding out? Am I, how am I doing here? But come into the weekend, the energy shifts again. It's the ebb and the flow and the up and the down. And we have this because we need the contrast the contrast so that we can expand so that we can continue to expand and really if you are able to really honestly and with such courage walk away from what is holding you back walk away from the limiting aspects of your life and change work on changing your thinking this is an opportunity for you to step into really step into your power I mean really step into your power really start to feel how how big you can go how far you can go, how high you can go, whatever it is you want to call it, whatever direction feels good to you. It's about, I like to think of it as expansion, expanding out. How far out can you expand? So this weekend there's an opportunity to come into that place of power, to really feel that power. But do not ever, most people do not ever feel their power. They never get to a place in life where they truly understand just what a powerful being that they are, what a powerful being you are. This is an opportunity for you to get a taste of that, to step into it. And remember, you know, when we do step into our power, then we step out, we step in, we step out. That's just what we do. But here's a good opportunity to step into it. And then for, into the weekend, you have an, an amazing opportunity to, uh, re, to, to um, foster relationships that are working for you and really let the, let the karmic wheel spin you know, things will start to, the energy will start to have a major uptake fall into the weekend. Okay, so that's the spiritual energies forecast. And I, like I say, you know, I always say this, I hope I do anyway, I'm going to start always saying it, we have free will, babe, we can do whatever we want. The energies come and the energies go. And you can take the opportunity to last current energies and work with it and maximize it for yourself, for your expansion. Or you can let it go and you can just let yourself be batted around a little bit. This kind of energy will come back. If you don't, if you're not in a position to do, quote, the work, unquote, which is that letting go piece, the letting go, the letting go, the letting go, then that's okay. There's no judgment there. It's just this is an opportunity for you to grab hold of the horns and, and rest and tumble, tumble with it and, and come out on the other side. But again, you will have many opportunities in this lifetime. And as long as you are committed, if you have a commitment in your heart, you'll know when the timing is right. Okay.
So I will be taking calls after this next segment. If you would like to ask a question about today's topic or call in for a mini reading, you'll be able to call. The phone number is 657-383-1895, and then you'll press 1 to get on the show. So one more time, that's 653, sorry, let me try that again, 657-383-1895, and you'll press 1 to get on the show. So what I want to talk about today is your life purpose, which I think is kind of perfect considering that this next weekend we're coming into power. We're really a, we're, we're addressing our power. And your life purpose is, of course, where you are most powerful. And it's so funny because, you know, we, we humans just love to complicate things. We love to make things so difficult. Like how many extra steps can we add to a really simple process? That's what we like to do. We tend to not feel like we've accomplished anything unless it's difficult, unless we're, you know, scaling a cliff. But that's just not the case. Spirit wants us to be happy and for it to be easy. We humans prefer it to be complicated and painful. Spirit shakes its head. We go, no, no, this way it's got to be. And so spirit works with us on that front. Okay, if pain is how we need to get your attention, so be it. So we are absolutely complicit in that. So life purpose is, is one of those things that causes so much angst in people. What is my purpose here? And if you have that question, what is my purpose here, I think that's awesome. Because it means that you're here for more than just existing or more than just running around in the running on the hamster wheel. You've got more and you will experience more. But let's just take some of the angst of that right now. And let me tell you how very, very simple this purpose is. Do you know why? Because you get to choose it. You get to create it. What you're really looking for is your essence. You're really looking to understand what it is you're here to experience, what it is you're here to express is a better word, what you're here to express. Some people are amazing communicators. Some people are here to express power. Some people are here to express love and nurturing. The, death, the, the life purpose that we're talking about, that's just a package you wrap up that essence in. That's your choice. You can do whatever package you want, whatever makes you happy. That's the role of free will in our life. We get to do on the outside whatever makes us happy and whatever is fun. And that can change. It can change over and over. There's nothing wrong with getting bored with one package and moving into another package. It's about capturing that essence. And that's the hard part for us. Because what happens, for whatever reason, the human condition seems to be that we were born into an environment where our essence, our authenticity is squelched. We are stuffed into a box that we do not fit in. And the journey of our life is to bust out of that box. And really, your life purpose, your destiny, your, is, is to find that essence. And you find that essence when you bust out of that box. And then you get to create your own, I don't know, let's not call it a box, but <laughs> your own shape to put that in. Um, I read it as I was pondering what I was going to say today. Um, and talking about life purpose, I, I was I, I cruised Facebook this morning and and I saw that uh, friends had posted this great quote by Eckhart Tolle, and I think this is really important to share when we're talking about our life purpose and talking about that package, you know, the package you put your essence in, because that can limit your destiny, that can limit what is possible for you if you are too identified with that package, too identified with that role. So let me read this quote to you because Eckhart Tolle said it much better. It goes, um, to do whatever is required of you in any situation without it becoming a role that you identify with is an essential lesson in the art of living that each one of us is here to learn. You become most powerful in whatever you do. Action is performed for its own sake rather than as a means to protect, enhance, or conform to your role identity. Every role is a fictitious sense of self. And through it, everything becomes personalized and thus corrupted and distorted by the mind-made little me and whatever role it happens to be playing. Most of the people who are in positions of power in this world, such as politicians, TV personalities, business, as well as religious leaders, are completely identified with their role, with a few exceptions. They may be considered VIPs, but they are no more than unconscious players in the egoic game a game that looks so important yet is ultimately devoid of true purpose. So what Eckhart Tolle is talking about there is the essence of being, not the essence of doing. Your role is your doing. It's how you, it's the box you put your essence in. 
but it's the essence that you need to keep track of, keep hold of, that you need to keep reminding yourself about so you don't fall into the trap of identifying with your package, identifying with it, just putting yourself in yet another box that simply limits your um, limits your expansion, limits your destiny, limits what is possible for you in this lifetime experience. Okay, so how do you find your essence? Most of us run around for a long time not being very in touch with our essence. With our, with, our, with our authenticity, with what we are here to express. So your job to find that is essence is to stop working so hard on it. Stop trying so hard. All you have to do is commit. You simply commit to the process and then let the path unfold in front of you. And I know this is really challenging because we're a doing kind of species. We're at our best when we're simply being and present and present in our essence and our authenticity, but we have a hell of a time staying there. And I get it. I'm, I'm right with you. <laughs> I, I'm routinely off busy doing, 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 and creating, creating, creating the package before I remember, oh, yeah, that's not what this is about. This is about coming back to self, to center, to essence. So when you catch yourself spinning out, what am I here to do? What do I need to do? What is my life purpose? What package do I put that in? How do I create this package? Is this the right package for me? Is this the wrong package for me? Remind yourself, oh, wait, I don't have to do that. Take a step back, come back to self, take a breath, and remember that you are committed to the process. You're committed to your essence. You're committed to discovering your essence, to letting your essence come to the forefront, come to the surface. So even though I, I, I'm going to just, I'm going to go into a doing mode because it feels really good to give you something, an exercise that you can do. One of the ways that you can get a clue as to what the essence is here that you're here to express, for example, nurturing, love, communication, connection, uh, teaching, you know, those are the kind of things that I'm talking about, an essence that you could put into whatever package. A good way to get a clue as to what that is is to find your intuitive power center, okay? So your intuitive power center is the easiest place for you to hook into spirit. It's also the place where we tend to be most clogged up. In other words, like the most blocked because we find that our intuitive power center is gonna be one of our chakras, okay? So if you're listening right now, this is really easy. I want you to just feel into life purpose, feel into essence. And then when I say to you, where do you feel that in your body? That's your power center. Where do you feel that in your body? So we go by the chakras. That's typically where you'll feel it is in your chakras. So the chakras, a really quick rundown. The root chakra is located at the perineum. The color for that chakra is red, and it's about our primal needs, our base, our root, you know, our upbringing, our tribe, our family, our community. The next one up is the sacral. The color for that is orange, and that is located in the lower abdomen. If you're a woman, it's like where your womb would be. And the, uh, this chakra is about creativity, feminine energy, the divine feminine, if you will. It's about sensuality and sexual connection. It's about uh, really enjoying the good things in the world, getting very present, your sensual experiences. The next one up is located at your solar plexus, so right below the rib cage. If you touch it, it'll be kind of hurts a little bit. It's a, it's a pressure point. So the color for the chakra is yellow, and that's your power center. And that is about how we assert ourselves in the world, not how aggressive we are, but how we assert ourselves, our personal, how our personal power shows up in the world. The next one up is in your chest. It's your heart. The color for the chakra is green, and it's about connection. It's about love, loving connection with another, with another person. The next one up is your throat, so that's right in your throat. The color for that chakra is blue. And this is about your authentic self-expression. It's also about communication, but it's really about how you authentically express yourself. The next one up is the point between the eyebrows. This is the third eye, and the color for this is purple. And this is about your intuition, your spiritual wisdom, trusting what you see. And finally, the very top of your head is your crown chakra, and that's your connection to the divine. That's connection to divine source, to God, to God consciousness up there. So wherever, when I asked you that question, you feel it in your body, the place where you felt it is where is what you're here to express. Okay, so, um, and this is very sick, but I think it'll get 
an idea. So if you felt it in your root, um, if you felt it in your root, that was, that's about expressing your uh, pri primal needs, anger or angry energy. Anger is just energy. Remember, it's a scary thing, but we can use that to great appeal. So if you felt in your root, you have tremendous energy to put into this world, tremendous energy to express. If you felt it in your sacral, so right there is your womb, you're here to express your creativity, and you're here to express your sensuality, and even your sexuality, and get very, uh, very in the, in the moment and present with the things of the world. If you felt it in your power center, that's your solar plexus area, you're here to express your, your personal power, your assertiveness, to put yourself out into the world in a big way. If you felt it in your heart, you're here to nurture others. You're here to be sort of a mother role. You're here to heal. You're here to, to help lift others up when they're in a bad way. If you felt it in your throat, you're here to communicate, to express, to bring a message out to the world. If you felt it in your third eye, you're here to teach. You're here to express your, your wisdom, to share your wisdom. If you felt it in your crown, you're here to connect with the divine and bring that out into the world, bring divine messages out into the world. And maybe you felt it in more than one place. Maybe you felt it, maybe you had a combination. So put those together, use your intuition, and then write down, if you will, just jot down some lines, what you experienced when you asked yourself, where do I feel it in my body? And then go from there. And then come your commitment and just commit to letting it come really crystal clear for you. So then when you find your essence, how do you create your life purpose? Because I know what I experience is I don't want to blow it by, you know, chasing something down a rabbit hole that's not going to get me anywhere. I want to really, like, nail it. <laughs> I, want to do, I want to do really great with my life purpose and um, putting, packaging up my essence so that it, it is for maximum impact. And that is going back to that identifying with your role, okay? So identifying with your role, it, it just when you find yourself doing that, and we all do, that's part of the human experience, just bring yourself back. And just remember, you just have to keep doing what you love. Keep chasing what you love. Whatever you are loving in the moment and really enjoying, that's what you're here to do. That's what, and, and if that changes, and it, and it will change, that's okay. Keep chasing it. It's like peeling back layers. Oh, I really am enjoying doing this. Oh, I'm not enjoying doing this anymore, but I'm really drawn to that. Okay, so go do that. In our culture, in, in the States anyway, we, we tend to get hit with don't be a quitter. You know, go, 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 go. Don't give up no matter what. But I don't really agree with that because I believe that we are here to experience all that we possibly can. So keep doing what you love. And the moment that you stop loving it, follow what's next. Follow the breadcrumbs. Keep peeling back the layer to get what really excites the hell out of you. And do it for the period of time that you want to do it. So that's it. That's your life purpose summed up. You found your essence. You get to create your package. Create your life purpose. Have fun with it. We are meant to be here and have fun and create, 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 and experience, experience, experience. It's the best thing, and it's the best thing we can do for ourselves, for our spirit, for, for creation, really. We are creating creation as we experience in this physical world, in this physical existence. We're creating creation. So that's all I have for life purpose. And at this time, I want to welcome you to call in with your questions about uh, your life purpose, your, your whatever you want to ask me, or you can call in and get a mini reading with me. My number is 657-383-1895, and then you'll press 1 to get on the show. And we've got one call already. The area code is 210. Hi, 210. Hello, this is Pearl from Texas. How are you? Hi, Pearl. I'm great. How are you doing? Did you say Pearl, like the gem? Is it a yes. gem? <laughs> okay. Hi, Pearl. Hello. So um, I actually really like your show. I, was, I always like to, I always like a mediumship um, meeting, um, reading if you do that, or um it doesn't really matter i just like to touch base with spirit so my purpose in this life is to help people so you're mm -hmm. asking about that okay well, and you want me to just tune into that and see see what else comes up for you what other details come through 
You can tune into that. That's fine. Or if my um, sometimes I have relatives that come through too. So I'm kind of open to everything. Okay, great. All right, let me just lean in. And thank you very much for the compliment on my show. I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. I am. It's very practical, common sense, and it's it's something that everybody can apply to. And, and sometimes it's not that way. So I really love that. Oh, good. <laughs> that makes me really happy. Okay, so Pearl, um, just give me one second here. As I'm leaning into you, my crown is tingling like mad. Um, and when my crown tingles, it it, it it means typically that I'm like, I, it's my confirmation that I plugged in. But I'm also feeling that this is for you as well. I get a lot of sensations in my body when I read for people. And right now I'm getting the message really clearly that I'm basically feeling your crown. Your crown, it feels like good and open and coming um, like flower, flowering open. I'm just going to lean into this to see what, what, else, what other information I get. Hmm. So as I'm looking, I'll just, just, just describe to you what I'm seeing and we'll see what else comes from it. I'm seeing like the crown, but I'm seeing all these little sort of popping white lights around your crown chakra. It's almost like it's like, it reminds me of a like carbonation, carbonated, a carbonated drink. You know, it's pop, pop, uh -huh. pop, 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 popping. And it feels like it's like it, it's kind of in a process of opening up, opening up, opening up. It's getting wider and wider and wider and bigger. Are you having more connected experiences? Because what I'm getting for you is you have a tremendous, you're, you're, you're really able to connect directly to spirit. Like this is not something you need help with. This is something that is really coming to the forefront for you. And really being able to connect directly, hook in with that consciousness. So I have, um, let's just say that I've been, um, I've been, I've seen enough to, to understand and believe that um, I, I like confirmation and affirmation because it, it makes me feel good. But to know, I mean, I've, for example, I will sit there and say, Spirit, if I'm in the right place, then um, would you give me a sign? And if, if, if it's right for me to receive this above somebody else, could um, it be nice to win a gift for confirmation, like for a drawing? And I'll win a, mm -hmm. and a, and never, I'll win a drawing, you know? So right. It, like, well, this, little things like that yeah. for confirmation. So, but, but the thing is, is that trusting myself. And the busier I get in a career field, the, a couple of them are new, the more I'm just on autopilot, and that's probably starting to open up because I was trying too hard for too long. Yeah. I mean, I'm getting, what I'm getting, what I'm hearing now is like, no, it's time for you to feel it. Feel spirit. Like the, the outside um, confirmations are fun. What helps us build our face muscle? You know, getting those, those confirmations and validations. Like, okay, good, good. This is real. This is happening. But now I'm getting, it's time for you to feel it. Like full body immersive, immersive spirit experience, which I cannot describe to you. It's something that you just need to feel. So just be aware that you're ripe for that. You're ready for that. And all you need to do is make that commitment and allow that to happen. And there's no danger involved. It's just that spirit wants in right now. That consciousness, that source energy wants in, wants to experience you and have you experience the source energy. It's like it wants to flood through your entire body. It's a really magical experience of wanting to happen for you. So your job is to just let it happen. Is to, to, to be okay with allowing that. It's all permission based. You know, we don't, we no, nothing gets into us unless we're okay with it <laughs> on some level. Yeah. So no, that's, no, what, that's no, what I'm I, getting I kinda, for you. I, woke, I welcome those experiences um, and I've worked hard, hard to kind of ascertain. So it was interesting that you said that because last week I was working on um, a client. And I just said, you know, I really need to, th these people really needed some help with their home. And I, and I just sat there and I got, um, it's the first time I can say I really got this. And I said, well, they said, if you get it, it was working, I was working on a quote. And if you get the quote in early, you will get the account. And I went, oh my gosh, gosh. that was a direct message. Cause there was, there mm -hmm. was, um, a buzz along with it for the first time. Yeah. And it happened to draw out, and we didn't get that, didn't get it. But the the fact that I received an impulse and information like that was really exhilarating for me. Mm -hmm. And that's only going to be increasing, Pearl, um, as time goes on. So I'm just, I'm feeling it in your whole body. Like it starts in your crown. And I just feel this whole body experience, which again, I cannot describe to you, but I can't wait for you to experience it because it's it's going to be epic. 
it's really, so, really. Is there anything that I can do to, to, to help it? No, all you do is just be open to it and allow it. You know, we, we usually have some resistance to this kind of thing. So whenever you notice resistance in whatever way it shows up, just remind yourself that you don't have to do that and the resistance will melt away. That's all you have to do. There's no doing. There's just being at this point and just letting it come in. Well, that's easy. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's usually a lot, it's a lot easier than we usually make it. <laughs> that's all right, easy. Pearl. Thank you. All right. You're so welcome, Pearl. You have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. All right. Okay. We've got area code 812 next. Hi, 812. Hello. Hi. Ingrid. What's your name? Yep. It's Robin. Hi, Hi Robin. Robin. How are you? How are you? Awesome. <laughs> I've been sitting on my phone waiting to get on here. All um, right. Well, I'm glad you're on. Um, I don't really so much have a question other than um, my whole life I've kind of resisted religion. I mean, like really mm-hmm. dug my heels in and just re- resisted um, yeah. because I was forced. And it, it's about a year and a half I got, ago I got really sick, and I was, um, I was in a coma for about 10 days and um, was in the hospital and in a nursing home. Oh, my gosh. And, um, and it seems like after that it's, it, I kind of realized I wasn't really resisting religion. I was resisting mm-hmm. organized religion. I wasn't resisting spirituality. I was resisting religion. And mm-hmm. uh, my cousin and I actually had a conversation about this, and we basically both grew up the same way, and we never felt, you know, I never, I never, I can't speak for her, but I never felt, you know, any kind of connection to to religion. Um, but I'm starting to get, I never could figure out why I always had, I always championed the underdog um I've always been really giving to to other people, and I recently um, figured out that I'm a life path nine, um, mm. so that kind of gave me insight into why I've always been the way I am as far as, you know, I feel empathy towards everything. It's like I take it on, I take other people on, and um, I don't even know where I'm getting mm-hmm. with this. I'm nervous. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, you know what? I Let babble me, when um, I'm nervous. Um, that's okay. I, <laughs> you're not alone there. <laughs> but um, I just I don't know where I am in life. I'm I'm, I'm on permanent mm-hmm. dis- disability. My health is isn't good, but um, that doesn't mean my life is over. Um, no. If anything, I feel like it's just begun. Like there's an opportunity for you here. In there. I, I went through a year of severe depression, mm-hmm. and um, actually yesterday morning I woke up, I had a great day, a friend of mine came over, we um, sat and we weeded out the flower beds, and I got on last night and I listened to your video, and I'm like, you know what, this is right, because the whole week is just right, so now today I'm full of dread, I have the, I have a lot of family issues, because they're all out conservative Christian Republicans and I don't uh, fit in and and we have my mother's 80th birthday party coming up this Sunday uh-huh, and she's uh-huh. in a nursing home so it's like this huge family thing that I'm just dreading and it's not my mother um it's it's just uh-huh. the whole dynamic and right so I just really felt like oh. what you had to say yeah I know yeah I'm talking. Oh, good. No, no. I'm just I'm feeling something, and I want to I want to communicate to you before it goes away because these things run these things run off on me if I don't get, get them out. So what I'm feeling is a, a tightening in my sacral, and you're familiar with the chakras. Yes. Okay. So I'm feeling a tightening in my sacral, especially when you start talking about your family. Like, oof. Um, and for me, what I'm feeling is creativity. So there's there's an innate creativity inside of you that has never been really expressed. It's, I feel like it's never really come out. I don't even know if you know it's there. But there's I know, I know it's there. I have that, art supplies okay. everywhere. Okay, good. So there's this creativity in there. And it just feels like it's clenching, this clenching feeling. And it's, um, it, it, uh, just 
leaning into it to see what other information I can get from it. So I want you to remember that. So if we look at the energy forecast for this week, the during the weekdays, sort of today through Thursday, you're like, oh God, you know. So this is this is when you're going through the oh God portion of it, the part that you're dreading, which is that letting go, that truly letting go, um, like an emotional cutting off. You know, it doesn't necessarily have to be a physical walking away, but it can be an emotional walking away or an energetic walking away. So that's what you're going through right now. But remember, as we come into the weekend, I don't want you to worry because coming into the weekend, you have an opportunity to really step into who you are. And the more you step into your creativity and play around with that this week, and there's art supplies, but there's a lot of different ways that you could be creative too. So get into that creativity and experiment, do a lot of experimenting, and that's going to bring out that power piece in you. Because that's your, that's your power center right there is that creativity, really expressing that. You're going to feel good. You're going to feel powerful. And you'll be able to go into the weekend with a lot more compassion and detachment, detached compassion. When you go in with detached compassion, you're going to have a lot more fun. You're going to be able to enjoy the parts of the, parts of the party that work for you and the things that come up that, are, that has, in the past have really, you know, made you want to scream or, or made you really uncomfortable – you're just going to be able to brush those off like, oh, whatever, because you know it's not about you. You know it's about them and their story. Yes. Does that help? Yes. Um, Good. So and your I actually job read is to play in the pain. <laughs> I'm, my, I'm sorry, I didn't hear that. Your my job, job is what? Is to play in the paint. Paint. Play in the paint. Well, I've been playing in the flowers, play in the right? Paint. Or playing in the flower beds. But, um, yep. but yeah, I have been real. I dread... I really dread having to go home. Well, my mother's in a nursing home, and she has Alzheimer's. So talking to her, you know, is not like it used to be. So so now I'm stuck with the rest of the family that I don't relate to, you know. Because mm-hmm. my mother's always kind of been like I am. I mean, she was into organized religion, but she wasn't – she was really empathetic. Um, where the rest of the family's not so much. Um, right. Well, I feel like you're able to go into the weekend with your heart open and really being able to be unattached to the the ways that people show has historically made you very uncomfortable because you do feel so different. And I'm I'm familiar with that, Robin. You know, I, I have a bit of that in my own history and I think I think we all do, all of us who are called to this sort of this twist of the spiritual we um, we're, we're the weird ones in our family to one degree or another. You know, it's like yeah, it's, I, I've never fit in anywhere. Um, yeah, and that's okay. Kind of been There's nothing wrong with and... that. It's because you're in an individual, highly, highly individual, and that's that creativity coming through. That your whole makeup is creatively done. You know, the way the, from the inside out. I'll have to agree with that. <laughs> um, you know, I've always kind of <laughs> leaned towards the creative side. Um, mm-hmm. Just my life right. had never, never really allowed it so much between work and, you know, I've always been on my own, you know, I've always been independent, taking care of myself, bought my house by myself, did everything by myself, so um, it, I, I've always been forced to work that 60-hour factory job to pay f- for life, you know, and it, so I was never able to really do what I wanted to do, right. it's just what I had to do. Yeah, and that's the new leaf that you're turning over now. Even though your life is set up differently, you know, you're you, but you have an income that you can work with, and you have an opportunity to really get into what you're here to do. So, you know, everything, you know, everything that we're going through, it's there's a gift in there. There's a gift in there somewhere. Can but you I see that anything that I need that I need to be doing? I I just I feel like I need yes. to be doing Play something. Playing the paint. Playing <laughs> the paint. <laughs> Playing the paint. Play in the paint. That's it. You know, like I was talking about earlier, we get very, very into what do I need to do? What do I need to do? And spirit says, nothing. Will you just be for a minute? Just be, spirit says. And so that's what I'm, I'm passing along to you is just be. Be in the paint. Play in the paint. That's all you're mm-hmm. required to do. And I'm telling you, playing in the paint, getting into creativity, spending time there, allowing yourself to spend time there is going to ex- help you exponentially. I, I can't even express to you how good you're going to feel. And how good you're going to feel going into the weekend if you can take as many hours as you can handle and play in the paint. 
do something creative, do collages, take, you know, a flower petal and do some mixed media with the paint and, you know, stick it on there, make something really interesting and creative that nobody's ever done before. Dive into it with everything you've got. That is all you are supposed to do. Okay. That's it. That means I don't have to clean up the dog hair or the dishes. No, you do not. Okay. <laughs> you have to paint <laughs> and get into creativity. I have if four rescue dogs. If you want to clean up the dog hair, if you want to clean up the dog hair and the dishes, you can. But don't okay. do it because you're avoiding the paint. <laughs> <laughs> okay all right all right my i dear. really appreciate well, you have you a wonderful to day all right of course. thank you you, too. Right, you have a wonderful day thank you all right bye-bye bye okay that is it we how we have for our callers our show is done we are go thank you for listening in today what a pleasure it has been to share with you and thank you for those who called in with your questions uh love tuning in for you my producer, Reverend Tiffany White Sage, woman of Goldilocks Productions. So without her, this show would not be possible. Goldilocks Productions has a number of spiritual shows, and you can find them archived on Spreaker.com. That's S-P-R-E-A-K-E-R.com slash Goldilocks Productions. That's Goldilocks with a Y, G-O-L-D-Y-L-O-C-K-S Productions. Spreaker.com slash Goldilocks Productions. So give us a follow, explore all the fantastic content that Goldilocks Productions produce, and please share, share, share. If you want to get in touch with me personally, you can visit my website at www.ingridhturner.com. That's I-N-G-R-I-D-H-T-U-R-N-E-R.com. Our next show is Tuesday, May 16th at 11 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, and I put together a bomb and panel for us to talk about sacred sexuality, so how our spirituality and our sexuality come together. So thanks again for joining me. I am so looking forward to God diving in again next week. You have a wonderful day. Okay, Kevin, for the grand prize of $1 million, what color is the White House? Um, I know this, I know this, I know this. Um... Five seconds. Oh, switching to Geico could save you a bunch of money on car insurance? Okay. Judges? That's true, Kevin. They'll allow it. Congratulations. You're a winner. Woo! Geico, because saving 15% or more on car insurance is always a great answer.